Hello, it's Sarah, and I've got my art journal out. I'm working on backgrounds and playing with mixed media, so I thought I would turn on the camera. Let's see, I did this one. I was inspired by a post on Facebook by Kate Crane, and it's okay. I just, I don't know. I was playing with um, gelatos, and I'm going to do that again. I really liked this. This was one, the background. Um, doesn't she look like the lady from uh, Bridesmaids? I can't think of her name, but there's an actress. Um, anyway, this was the, the background that inspired me to continue making backgrounds. It just was so soft and easy, and I actually used my um, these Neocolor 2s and just scribbled color. So I just wanted to show you how easy it is to get started. So you just take a blank page, and today I wanted to change my color palette a little. I'm trying to, you know, um, I usually have a go-to palette that I always use, so I wanted to change it up. And I'm going to use Gelatos. Now, Gelatos are a Faber-Castell product, and it's one of the first mixed-media tools that I ever got. Um, I have a ton of them. I keep them in this little tub. And I have some metallics, and it's a good variety, but I never use them. They are water-based, and so... They're tricky for me because I like to, like, for example, when I was working on this face, once you, like, if you use a water-based thing, you can smudge it all up. So this was acrylic paints. I was playing with my, um, my new ones that I got. What is her name? I don't even know her name. I'm supposed to be having a, uh, a free, Jane Davenport is supposed to have a mixed media, a free mixed media workshop. And I think she's just advertising more for her, uh, all her new products that just came out. But anyway, I was using the paints. And then if I, if I add anything, like then when I outline, then I have to go back and touch up and I smudge it all up. So um, you got to be careful when you use a water-based product based, I mean, versus a, um, a, per, a permanent ink. So that being said, all these inks here are permanent. So once I get to the top, it'll all start to be permanent. I am going to use white acrylic paint. That's pretty much the thing. I have my brayer because I'm going to do a little brayering on here. Um, and we'll probably do some a little bit of stenciling at the end. All right, so let's get started. All I'm going to do is just put down, and these, I don't know the names of these. These are just gelatos. This is red. I'm going to put down some color, and I want it to be really... I'm just going to, I'm pushing pretty hard because I want this to be a focal color. So let's see, I have yellow, orange, and I have a little gold. So this is called Metallic Melon. And it actually isn't very orange, is it? I thought it would be more orangey. But let's see how this goes. I'm hoping for the best. And this is called Banana. And I have some gold that I'm going to, I'll probably put it over the banana. But maybe when this mixes, if this mixes with that, it'll become orange. Because red and yellow make orange. Alright, and then I'm going to put a little bit of this gold in those other spots. Ooh, I haven't used that one in a long time. Let's see if this one's juicier. Well, that's a really different color gold, but I kind of like it. I want to get it in there. All right, then I'm going to use a baby wipe. So this is kind of fun. And you're just going to take, I want to start enacting or, you know, activating this gelato. And I'm just going to go into each color first separately just to activate it. And then I'll attempt to blend a little bit. Activate the yellow. Now if I go over on top of the red, turn a little bit orangey. And then the gold. See, I knew it would come off. Sometimes it kind of comes off. And it doesn't look like much. I mean, it's just color on a blank page, right? 
I think I'm going to add a little more of this melon. I just want it to be darker. Um, I'm going to add a little red over here too. I want the red to be more prominent. All right. I'll go into the melon first and then see I kind of took the red, the brightness of the red away. All right. And then I'm not even going to bother drying it or anything. I'm just going to get some white paint out and I'm going to put it on oh, my palette over here and I'm going to use my brayer and roll out some white. This is, I think this is uh, a Ranger. I have a couple of different brayers. And I'm just, this is straight titanium white. And I am going to just and I like to keep this in horizontal and vertical, no zigzag. Like I don't want to go crazy. I just want it to be uniform and if I can and I love the dry kind of dry brushy look that it, it gives and it also kind of just brings the colors together in a way and we're gonna add the color back on with stamps in a minute and this also gives the paper some tooth but see, I love that already. The colors and everything, it just looks so pretty. Um, I think I'm good. I like it. I'm just really cleaning off my brayer. Cleaning off my palette. But yeah, it just gives it a whitewashy look to it. All right, so I think I can probably do some, maybe I'll just hit it with the heat gun a little bit. So today I organized my paints because I do feel like I want to add painting in my mixed media. I want to have it at the ready. I'm just saying if I can see the gold at all. Maybe I'll spatter with gold at the end or something. I kind of see it. It just looks, it doesn't look what I thought it would look. But this is kind of orange. I did get some orange. The melon is more of a, a pinky color. It's not as orange as I thought, but it's metallic. See the shine? Um, so now I'm going to take and I'm going to just use some stamps that I, you know what I've been using is this flip flop. This is part of a flip flop that I got at like five and below. And both sides have different textures. I've been using that. And then I carved these myself. Uh, one of Kate Crane's go-to, she likes to make little lines with a credit card. So I'm just going to do some stamping. I have red, yellow, and orange. So the orange might be, let's see if I have a more, I have a couple different colors. Nah, I don't have like a melony color. I'll just go with the orange or maybe like because I don't even know if the yellow the yellow might show up on the white like I may have to put more white we'll see but let's just start and I'm gonna do this one this is kind of like a starbursty looking I'm gonna try and put that on here and see oh it looks green so I probably put I had a different color on here first or something that's okay it's a background and we can always um, go over it right so let's do some orange with I want to do orange in this swirly I don't really want to take away from that uh, melanie color I really like that Melanie. Melanie, that's a girl's name. So that looks cool. I want to do some red with, I'm going to do the technique that 
Kate Crane does. So I actually, you know, I probably could just squirt this gelato. I'm going to use paint. I have my paint ready to go today because I just organized it. So I have this color. It's called Country Red. I'm going to use my credit card, or this is a gift card, and just put my the side of the card and then just pull it. So she just makes lines like this. Just like that. I like it. See, and that's how, like, paint, I don't know. I'm just used to paint. I'm not used to, like, the gelatos. I just don't really, haven't played with them enough to know what they do for sure. Um, and then let's stamp in red, too. Let's do, because I really did want the red to be the dominant. I think I want to do circles. This is a stamp I carved. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, it's not working. Well, that's cool. I like that one. Right? You could just you could just go crazy. So let's go ahead and do, I think I need black though, right? I think I forgot about the black. I'm, I'm sorry this didn't turn out like it's green. I really didn't intend for any green to be on here. But let's do, you know what, I might just do paint. I'm going to get some black paint because that flip-flop works better when... And I just use craft paint. This is all my craft paint because I painted for years. And um, I'm going to use the brayer and just put some black on this flip flop. Uh oh, I got it a little. Let's see what happens here. Isn't that cool? I'll try and go over the green maybe. Can you guys see what I'm doing? So then, oops, what you really should have like is a, is a final product in mind, which I really don't. I don't have a final product um, that I'm thinking about doing. You know what else? I'm going to do the other side of this as well. The other side is kind of like uh, speck or spots. I'll show you. I'm just getting it out of the crevices. But it's kind of like a speckly, so I'll show you what this looks like. See that? I'm just going to go over the green things that I made. Alright, and then it, it can get out of hand. And if you feel like you've put too much on there, you can go, I'm going to go back over it, I think, with the brayer. Or I could just take my, my circle stencil and come back with white. But I think I am, I do want to go over it with more white. I think it just calms it down. I don't know, though. See, I'm not an expert yet, and I get carried away with the fun part of it. And uh, just wanted to get that black. Um, I think I'm going to just do it with stenciling. I'm going to add some white back on here a little bit because it looks a little chaotic. And then I think I'm going to shade around the edges with, what should I use, like a dark, I use, my Payne's Gray is like my go-to shading color, but for this I'm going to use like a black cherry or something, like a dark, that might be too burgundy. I'm going to use russet. This is like a brownish red. I think I'm going to use that. But first, let's go back in with some white. And what do I have? My circles. And I have, I really love this honeycomb. I love this honeycomb. I'm going to put that on there. Um, let's make sure this is, all the black is gone. And then I'm going to put white. 
And I just use a cosmetic sponge that I get at the, oh, that's a lot of paint, at the dollar store. And don't be too, I want it to kind of be, get some coverage, but um, it'll bleed under if there's too much paint. And I'm just going to go for it. Uh, I don't really know where I want to go. I think I'll go in some of the darker areas because the white will show up just that much better if there's a dark background underneath it. But then I'm getting rid of all my red. Let's see what that looks like. It looks so cool, but I definitely need some up here. Like along the top. And just I just try to keep it even. So I don't want to get rid of that orange. I really love that melony orange color. It's like I'm saying the name melony. I gotta go in the middle more. This green, it's got to go. See, I like that better. When you bring the white back up, and then I think I'm going to um, shade around the edges, and then I'm going to call it done. But there's so much you could do. You could come in with your, um, your gel pens, and just, I'm going to try this russet, and we'll hope for the best. Um, your Posca paint pens and all that, and... Uh, doodle some put a put a focal piece on here and then shade behind it so I'm just loading up my angle brush and I'm just gonna pull some of this down the edge it's not wet enough it needs to slide and if it's too much you can um, use your baby wipe and rub it off but I think this should just frame it And I actually, I don't know if this is the best color, but I think it's kind of nice. Oopsie, lost a stencil. But if I had a nice, like, it's kind of a solid color stamp or something, I'm not sure. See, I'm still a beginner at it, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to just get a background. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm loving my colors. And then what else do I need? I don't know. A little speckle of gold? Nah, I think I'm good. Isn't it cool? Circles, we could do circles. I think I want to do a couple red circles. I gotta do it. So I have just caps. I use bottle caps. I'm going to do some red. I have to. I think I need it. Because I wanted red to be the focal image. and Or image. The focal color. And I kind of, I lost it now. So let's just put a few red circles. I love them. Do a double. And I have this size, which is a Snapple cap. And I've just rubbed out some red paint on my palette here. Hopefully it'll... I don't know really when enough is enough. I don't. I get a little... Can you see that? I love it though. I think that's good and then maybe like black lettering would be good for words or something I don't know I don't know what to do I think I'm good it's a shame about that green <laughs> I don't know that green's just like a sore thumb but I like it 
all right you guys so just give it a try slap some color down it's super easy I really didn't use that many I mean yeah I have them so I'm, I'm trying to use what I have and the gelatos too haven't used them in at least three years I haven't used them since I got them so that's a gelatos background and then no not that one I did another one. Oh, see these are just some other faces I've been trying to do faces this is just a sketch her name's Tony Burt I watched a couple of her videos this is the uh, geometric patterns that I did I wanted to put them in here and I like how they turned out but where the heck is that other back here it is it's right on the right there so this is purple turquoise and gray I tried to use gray and I went a little crazy with that and I did do some word stamping just about creativity but then this one I kind of like better I like this one better all right you guys thanks for watching